This week on Conflict Zone, I'm in Berlin to talk to Ekaterina Zakarieva, Foreign Minister of Bulgaria. She has been among the politicians searching for a common EU approach on the question of large-scale migration. Now that a compromise has been found, is it a fair deal for everybody? And will the agreement last? Ekaterina Zakhereva, welcome to Conflict Zone. Your country has just concluded six months in the presidency of the EU. The most pressing was and is still migration. Now there is a deal on this, but it is very light on details, isn't it? I think uh, there were many challenges during our presidency. And uh, migration, uh, unfortunately, is... Uh, the most divided uh, topics, uh, high, very high in the uh, EU agenda, uh, more than three years. And what we try to do uh, during our presidency is uh, to propose compromises. But you didn't succeed. Uh, yeah, but we were really, we are, we are really close to do this and uh, to succeed. This. But and, very uh, close doesn't mean that you manage it. The Unfortunately, deal, yes, you're the right. The deal refers to controlled center for asylum seekers on European territory. The decision but also to, outside. Yeah, the decision to build these will be voluntary. Let's be honest, no one will volunteer for that. It's also inside, inside and outside. Inside and outside. Yeah, it is so what's decision. about inside? No, nobody wants to do it, even you decided that. There are some existing, and uh, uh, what's, what is the Bulgarian position of uh, this? I will speak now. After the presidency, can speak much more loud. Bulgarian uh, position, a Bulgarian proposal. Uh, there are three pillars, our opinion, uh, and three dimensions. How to say to solve this uh, with uh, a long, long perspective manner, not just uh, crisis after crisis after crisis. And we wasn't prepared for the first crisis. None of, one of the European member states was prepared. But everybody knew that there are crises in the world. Everybody knew that there are crises, the crises in the Arab countries, in Africa, Absolutely. wherever. And Absolutely. Europe is also, for some crisis, responsible. So, naivety? <laughs> About what? Uh, you know, okay. Uh, is Europe responsible for some crisis? Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe, partially, yes. Uh, and uh, the Bulgarian proposal for Dublin migration is not to under three years are we in crisis or not? And it took us three years to take decision to sign, for example, EU-Turkish uh, agreement, which actually decreased 89% uh, the pressure of the border. But le let's talk about the and future. Also, these, are, these are old solutions. But let's talk part about the of future. The for the future. We just had a summit, a European summit. Is Bulgaria willing to build an asylum center like that? Will you volunteer? No, we don't. So we everybody is saying no. <laughs> so what does it mean? Everybody is saying no. Everybody decided. Bulgaria also decided the last tax. So what does it mean if you say no? So we external border, as you know, and uh, we protect our external bo border extremely good. Not our European Union external border. And we have centers and we register, actually. We have registered and register all refugees that cross our border. So according to the Dublin regulation, existing one. And uh, what happened actually? If they are refugee, they have to, see, to, 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 to find the first safety place. But most of those people don't want to stay in Bulgaria, they don't want to stay in Greece, they don't stay in Italy even. But they this, for, this has perhaps certain reasons. They, they we will want talk to choose about that. A country in Europe, which is not the case that we can. Yeah, we will this talk about that. Why uh, refugees don't want to stay in Bulgaria? But let's let's continue not to talk a little Bulgaria, bit about the control centers. They don't want to stay in Greece, actually, too. Let's let's talk about the controlled centers because this is a very important issue. These processing centers are closed and controlled. That's the idea, right? The processing center and. Uh, in the beginning, there were hotspots, uh, uh, detention centers. Now we call them uh, processing, processing, processing but centers. But they are closed and controlled. That's the idea. Uh, and uh, uh, there are two types of this: closed control for the people who don't actually uh, have received. Uh, but you don't asylum. know in advance who is really allowed and not allowed. Basically, a closed processing center is like a prison. 
for escaping people. Many of them barely survived uh, the journey to Europe. Is that what you want? Closed centers? Uh, first of all, what we want is to close our external border. It's not normal. Everybody who wants to come to live in Europe and to look for a better life, which is normal will for the people, to can cross illegal the border and With decide respect, where to live. We don't live. speak about these ones who want to have a better life. We are speaking and talking about these ones who have to escape, like Syrians, because there is war. In Syria, there are unfortunately still war eight years, actually, already. That's why. One and these, the people, and these people are not to compare, and the asylum um, legal rights are not to compare with these people who want to have a better life. So really, let's talk about these ones. So let's make a necessary. difference between the refugees and illegal migration. Yes. Because unfortunately, what we see in Europe, that people stop to make these differences because of many illegal migrants that are still coming and continue to come in Europe. And uh, this is the problem, even in Bulgaria, but not only in Bulgaria. I just spoke with, uh, with the German uh, friends, and unfortunately, even in Germany, the people uh, uh, stopped to make this difference, refugee and illegal migration. But it's, uh, this and is the work they, of politicians they, they, they to explain the to their population and we not stop what it try means. To explain. We it seems that, that European politicians want to explain to their population the opposite that the refugee crisis is a crisis, not because refugees are coming. I mean, another part of the deal... But if uh, you with see the data, it, was, it is also absolutely different. 2012, 13, 14, 15. 90% from the people who crossed for the European border were refugees. And now it's not, that, not, not like that. But you have to control it's it. You have, you have to have a legal 80 process. 80% are illegal migrants. Yes, but you have, however, regardless of that remark, there is a legal process which has to be done. Another part of the deal with which your Prime Minister Borisov has expressed support for is the so-called disembarkation platforms in North Africa. You agree with this? What we, what we, yeah, this is Bulgarian position. What we support is three pillars measures, and they cannot work separate. So one Not is, one of them is enough. I, I understood. So, so one is North Africa and disembarkation platforms. So what is, what is the, our, our opinion? And this is in this declaration, actually. It's European declaration. It's European leaders' declaration, achieved after uh, hours and hours of discussion. And it's cross external borders, but solidar with the external borders countries. Because we, yes, okay, we manage to tackle ourselves, but it's much more difficult for Greece and Spain. But we sh should not forget also Bulgaria, Cyprus, Malta, and so on and so forth. Also, when we talk about solidarity, is it solidar only the external borders country to accept all of the refugees or illegal migrants that want to come in Europe? But you know what it's is not my problem? Solidar. You know what's it's my not problem? Solidar. During we are talking about that, North African states have already rejected this idea. There is not one North African state who said, here I am, we are helping Europe. But we have to support also them too. Of course, through this Africa Trust Fund that we created. And if you see the data, 95% decreasing of, uh, of uh, uh, migrants and refugees, illegal migrants and refugees, uh, since the, the measures that we took, since signing the Turkish uh, EU statement, agreement, uh, since creating and developing an African Trust Fund. I'm, I'm, so I'm, let's I'm very be... sorry. Again, you are telling to your population and to the Europeans that disembarkation platforms will be in North Africa. There is not one state who is saying we, have... we agree on that. We continue, we continue to talk with them. And that's why one of the most important pillars of this is external uh, power. We have to continue to work with those countries to support them. Uh, and it's not only not North Africa country, let's be frank. We talk about Sahel region, about Horn of Africa region. Uh, we you also, talk about Libya? We, the we, EU, Libya, the EU Libya wants to difficult. negotiate with uh, Libya? Do you support this yeah, idea? Yeah, with Libya we have to negotiate. You support this idea? Yes, we support this idea. Libya does not have a functioning government. Libya is a very complicated situation. They have two governments, as you know. But you want uh, to negotiate with them. Uh, very difficult border control, but even in some of the But you just said you want to negotiate yeah, with we them. Want, Will you negotiate with continue. warlords, smugglers, criminals? 
which are not we have the, to which are not the them, solution, not to, they are the not problem. Not to negotiate with the smugglers. But you are and negotiating if we continue, with governments without any power. If we no, there is an uh, official government, but unfortunately, official yes, split. in power no. Uh -huh. it's, I would not say like this. I'm not agree with your if assessment. If they would be as powerful as you are just saying. You wouldn't have problems so, with sorry, but I want to smugglers, answer. criminals. They can't take care in their own country. May, may I express our position? Yes, sure. Is it possible? Sorry. Uh, but what we do, if you continue to accept the illegal migration, actually, we support smugglers and criminals who don't care about those people and uh, just take the money and uh, push them in the water and say, I don't care about you, and not only in the water, in the trucks too. So we have to tackle, and we have to stop this illegal cross border of our Fair illegal enough. crossing border. Fair enough. Because through continued support of this illegal crossing, we actually support the smugglers. But fair this enough. Is our but your solutions. So we will not negotiate with smugglers and traffickers. But you are negotiating with Libya. Uh, oh, uh, this only. What are you saying? That all Libyans are smugglers and no, traffickers and the government, criminals? No, but the government is not oh, the very government? powerful. And you know this, as you know that the North African, they, don't, they are not interested to negotiate with Europe. No, they are. But you are telling and this to the population, new frustrations. No, you're not right. We negotiate and we actually work very uh, uh, in close cooperation with the uh, UN and with um, uh, International uh, Organization of Migrants, and we have actually a huge successes. So let's be frank. We are not there where we have to be on joint uh, common decision, but we are really very close. But we have a huge difference since 90, since uh, uh, 2015. So we have 95% decreasing of illegal crossing borders, and these are the facts. Let's have a look at Bulgaria's record. You have taken in a few refugees. The Bulgarian Helsinki Committee, a human rights NGO based in the capital Sofia, says, quote, the situation of zero integration of refugees in Bulgaria has been going on for a fourth year in a row. Zero integration? And then you are astonished that uh, refugees want to, live, uh, to leave uh, Bulgaria? No, uh, I think that, uh, uh, of course, I know these reports. Uh, I'm not agree with everything what is written there. So the fact that all the people that come and uh, absolutely free with politicians, but not only different organizations to see what happened in our border, it's um, many speculation what we do with the refugees, but it's proven that it's not. We it's protect not, it's not, our it's not. Turkish. That According to the EU Turkish uh, statement, actually, they are obliged, if they try to illegal cross border, to take this and to send them back in Turkey. So uh, with all we don't respect, have no, no, actually, it's, it's, we don't there have... There are also other opinions. Let's take the Amnesty World Report 2017. They say, quote, the necessary services were not provided to migrants and refugees, including to unaccompanied children. Uh, it documents a case from February, uh, for example, last year. A Syrian family had been granted humanitarian status in Bulgaria. The major in the town of Elin Pelin said, quote, Muslims from Syria were not welcome. Yeah, the and truth is this Bulgaria is... doesn't want to uh, host refugees. I see that uh, not only Bulgaria doesn't uh, want to host the refugees. It, we have to take care for the refugees, but see what happened. And that's why I started with this. We stopped to do a, a difference between migrants and illegal, uh, illegal migrants and refugees. We agree on that. And this is because of when we want to tackle, if we think that we can tackle with populism, with more populism, it's a wrong approach. And what is the decision now? Are all the European uh, member states to build fences among us? Schengen don't work. Is it, isn't it better to protect our external borders and to create if for the countries who want uh, migrants because they need uh, working forces to create a legal program for migration because actually we save 650,000 people from debt. Okay, so let's talk. So let's if talk. we continue, my opinion, if you also listen to Bulgarian opinion, if we want to tackle and to save people's life actually, to tackle with illegal migration to traffickers, uh, smugglers and those criminals, we have to stop illegal crossing borders so, of the European Union. I got if it. you're so a refugee, you don't try to cross I, illegal border. If you think that 
according to the uh, to the Convention for Refugees, you are a refugee, you have to go and I say, understood. I am a refugee, this is my appeal for, I, for I our um, so, asylum seeker. I understood. So let's ta talk about something else. You seem to have no problem with the Bulgarian national movement with according to a report by the Council of Europe, is, quote, notorious for systematically propagating hatred against neighboring people in the Balkans, as well as anti-Gypsy propaganda. It's your coalition partner. Uh, yes, we have coalition partner and we have different opinions, but we have really very clear coalition agreement. But it's your party. I see you that are it's... in power with this um, party. Another example of this hatred is coming from the deputy prime minister, your deputy prime minister, Simeonov. He was found guilty of hate speech against Roma. He's still deputy minister and you He's don't say prime anything. Minister. He is deputy prime minister, not yeah. deputy minister. Deputy prime minister, yeah. and you don't say anything. Anything for what? I, I was not agreed with his opinion. We're different political parties. I but see that in, in Germany, in Germany, that they have a, a different position about I don't migration. Know anybody uh, who is uh, talking like that about minorities in the German government. Another quote. Let's listen to your deputy prime minister. He said in the Bulgarian you have parliament. Asked him for his opinion. The, I'm not agree with his opinion. Roma people are arrogant. We have to try to integrate them, but if we Why? talk about right, and we try to integrate them, but Who if we... Who do you integrate now? Roma, refugees, Roma, your deputy prime minister? Roma, 12% uh, of arrogant, Bulgarian presumptuous with and ferocious humanoids demanding wages about labor, demanding sick leave benefits without being sick, child benefits for children that play outside with the street pigs, and maternity benefits for women with the instincts of street bitches, this is your deputy prime minister. You are still in a coalition with such a man? We are. And uh, actually, since he, this was during pre pre his pre-election campaign, he is, in, he is in the government. He absolutely changed his approach. And you and don't he have a problem to, responsible. to have your post with such a guy? I don't. This is, a race, is this a racist statement, yes or no? For the gypsies, it was yeah. a racist statement. But so you are you are in government with a racist party and a I mean, power is everything. It was during the pre-election campaign, and I was not agree with what he just what he was said. And since we are in the government, we have absolutely clear position that is stick to the European values and also conventions that we signed and joined. And if we continue to be blind that illegal migration. It's a huge problem, and in every hey, European, we are talking in every about European Roma, country, it's we are, part. We are talking about Bulgarian citizens. Migration. We are not talking we, about migration. We, we do we a lot. Of, talk, he put a lot of efforts to integrate Roma. our Roma he population. About Roma and but the fact is, the fact is that most of them, we have 6.8 percent unemployment, 5.8 percent unemployment in Bulgaria, and most about of the Roma unemployed people. Unemployed people are unfortunately from so this the Roma is legitimizing so this? what is what is what we do what we do we create a special program to oblige the Romas to send the children in the schools and in the kindergarten to give them a future so we put a lot of efforts and they are Bulgarians they are Bulgarians yeah they are Bulgarians we have uh, 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 Bulgarians uh, with Roma origin we have also 12 percent of Bulgarians with Turkish origin. So, and we are proud, we are proud with the ethnic tolerance and we never, compared with other Balkans country, didn't have tension between the different people. We didn't have tension between the Bulgarians with is, Bulgarian no, origin and between Deputy Bulgarians Minister, with Turkish origin. So many us. people said a lot of things before elections. It's not many people. Man, no, many people in Europe also say a lot of people, uh, many things before elections, not only in Bulgaria. After elections and after they join the government, it's a, a different position. So okay. Ever, never in our history, we have tension between the Bulgarians with Bulgarian origin and the Bulgarians with Turkey. So we are proud of this. Okay, you are also proud. Are you tolerance. also proud about your important relationship with Russia? You have a good relationship with Russia? Uh, we have good relationship with Russia, but we are absolutely uh, stick to the European uh, principles. And uh, so, if we mention and point Bulgaria as the best friend of Russia, Bulgaria stopped South Stream, Bulgaria stopped stop, uh, nuclear power Belene. What's about and, sanctions? Uh, other, other How's your position about sanctions? And, and uh, also Bulgaria's project. So 
we are absolutely tolerant to European values. Are you in favor for the sanctions against Russia? The sanctions, Russia? just the European leaders took decision to continue the sanctions. You are so in favor. So obviously Bulgaria support, was supportive for this. And these are sanctions, not again Russians, it's a sanctions, it's our red lines about Russian behavior. Uh, to uh, Ukraine and uh, to Crimea. So, but what's about course, the Ukraine? What's about the crime, uh, Crimea crisis? What's about Syria? What's your opinion about Vladimir Putin and his policy? Uh, Vladimir Putin uh, obviously want to be very strong man. Uh, and, Do you condemn uh, that? And, uh, and um, uh, for example, for, for Crimea, absolutely it's unacceptable. And none country can just decide to take this is my part, uh, not stick to the to the to the international rules and values. For Syria, uh, so you're condemning for, for, Russia's uh, yeah, uh, Russia behavior in Ukraine. For 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 Syria, for example, and what we can do together with with Russia, we have to work together with Russia uh, on European level, but on also on bilateral level to tackle, for example, terrorism to uh, try to solve the crisis in Syria, uh, to North Korea. But you are very dependent, and, Bulgaria uh, is very dependent on, on Russia. On Russia, yes, yes, Russia, yes. More or less 100%, no. right? More than 100 cannot be, but uh, around 92. Let's talk about corruption. Uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, dependent on Russia, yes, but we work on, uh, on diversity. And what, 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 what actually happened? Let's talk a, lot, a little bit more about uh, gas supplies. We stopped our stream. And some of the member states developed a Nord Stream too. So, uh, and also time, at, the at the same, same time, time, what we what what we are, uh, we we will be dependent on Russia and Turkey at the same time because if we stop supplies through North North at the same North, time, Europe, at the same time, Bulgaria scrapped once a multi-billion. And we Euro think that it's important for Bulgaria to have. On, so, uh, the, the, to develop own routes of gas supply. Yeah, and but we think why that are you, why the, are you then the working on the multi-billion project to, to build a nuclear power plant with Russia, Rosatom? It makes you even more dependent from Russia. We start Pelene, but now we paid uh, billions for uh, two uh, reactors that are like monuments and we want to develop this project as private project without dependency. So we look for private it's investments. It's, they are different candidates. We still didn't choose a candidate. So, but, but you decided in, in your parliament, Mr. Mr. So for us it's important Mr. Borisov, to continue Mr. Connection. Borisov said that it is a good idea to restart the project. Yeah, we try to find investor because we pay a billion from our taxpayers for two reactors that sit like a monuments and we will look for private investment. They are interesting, some private investors from China, that are interested given from the United States, they are coming from Russia, so we didn't choose. But we will negotiate. Let's talk, Depends let's talk. on the uh, when, negotiations. If we, if, we, if we speak about Russia, let's talk about corruption, because this is also one of your responsibilities. You are Deputy Prime Minister in charge of judicial reform, and in this in its 2017 report on the fight against corruption and organized crime in Bulgaria, the EU talked about, and quote, unpredictable legislative decision-making process and suggested your government has rolled back earlier reforms. Which is this report that you read? Which year? It is uh, the report of the EU. Which year? Uh, 2017. No, the report from Tevons, uh, 2017. It's, uh, the 2017 yes, report. That Transparency is uh, 2017. Transparency corruption perception said the same thing. They said that uh, corruption is increasing. Your own president said it just a few weeks ago. There is a lot of talking about corruption in Bulgaria. It's your president. But I think too little is being done. Why does he say that? Uh, you know, uh, first the report from 2017, it was uh, in autumn before, uh, and then uh, the, the, the last one, it was the last one. Uh, said that we are absolutely uh, moving very well uh, through this uh, uh, CVM mechanism that we have. And uh, we just adopt and create in the beginning of uh, uh, 2018 the anti-corruption body uh, which actually already have uh, successes. So let's give a chance to this body to we see... We more uh, than one and a half years in duty. Global Financial Integrity, a Washington-based research organization says every year the country losses so between if you 14 see, and 22 If you percent. see our... Let's talk with numbers because they are much more uh, precise now sometimes. 
uh, we have almost 4% economic growth. We have uh, 7.5 billion uh, trade with Germany and increasing investment from Germany and German investors are feeling very well. For example, the biggest foreign, uh, foreign investor in Bulgaria is Netherlands. So if the business feel well, this means that there is no so dark uh, picture in Bulgaria. Of course, we have problems with corruption and we want to tackle corruption not because of Brussels and not because of Transparency International or not because of uh, Hague or Berlin or, or Paris. We think that we have problems and we work to tackle these problems, but it's not so dark. And if you uh, see actually, for example, for, because our Prime Minister very uh, 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 was, like to, you know, to, to, to give I, I was only examples, quoting, for example, you know, I'm for listening to smuggling, you. smuggling of cigarettes. We are less than 8% compared with other member states. What is this? Is it corrupt? Are they corrupt? Of course we have problems with corruption, I don't deny this. But more I, light we or have more problems. Clouds? We have problems with corruption and I, we don't deny this. But we work to tackle this and we are much better compared with what was uh, five or Ekaterina Zakharieva, thank you very much for being on Conflict Zone. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.